It's been just over 24 hours since Momoguro has sold out. In this video, we're going to have a look at the charts, the stats, all of the numbers, everything that's going on in a subjective view to give you more information about the project, what's happening, and my analysis. So this is a post-drop analysis of Momoguru. Uh, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just a look at what's happening with it. You have to do your own research when you are moving in and out of the project, so please don't take this as financial advice. Now, this project has been stupidly hyped. Everyone has been on it. Everyone's been looking for it. It has uh, 122,000 followers, so it's going hard. Now, when we actually have a look at OpenSea, just for a snapshot here, and we'll also check out Blur, the floor price is sitting at a point 0.16. It was minted at 0.22 and everyone could mint two a piece. So what this meant is it meant that it was going to cost you 0.44. You get to save a bit of gas, but this then meant that it was going to get a little bit hectic on the secondary market. Now, when we have a look at the volume, we've got crazy amounts of volume, 5,300 ETH worth of volume with a 5% royalty. And the royalty actually did also go over to Blur itself. When you have a look at Blur, things have been flying with the bids. Um, so the floor price is currently 0.16 and we've got a 0.6 um, with 44 uh, sort of people bidding and we've got a size of 143. So there is a lot of liquidity in this market. You can see this ticking over right here. There's almost 6,000 ETH worth of bid volume on this. So people are bid farming. Now, full disclosure, I did mint to myself. I had one listed, went to sleep went up, hit the top uh, when it sold out and actually triggered, which was nice. And then I've been playing the bid farming game and I have sort of recently accepted a bid, but then I will put in additional bids to kind of bid farm if I can move back in. I'm not sure if I'll move back in on the project or what will happen because it is a little bit um, sort of uh, frothy after the mint. But just so you know, full disclosure, so you don't think I'm pumping my bags or fudding other people's bags. Now, what we're actually going to do right now is jump into Nansen. Now, Nansen is my favorite tool to go to. I'll have a link for Nansen down below if you want to go check this out. Now, on Nansen, it is sitting at number three, and this would be also the same on OpenSea. When we actually jump into the project itself and have a look, we can see just where it ran and all of these price uh, movements, price actions. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in, have a look at the price chart, have a look at some of the actions, some of the holders, all of that kind of thing. Down below, there are chapters so you can fast forward to those sections that you want to just help you navigate get that video easier it makes it a little bit more intuitive when you want to get to the numbers and the stats that you want first now what we can see here is that the average price over the 24 hours at the 0.7 um, but all the good stuff and just so you can kind of see all of the uh, volume stats here um, we, which we kind of covered and also it was the supply of 8,888 at that 0.22. Now, what we can see here is that instantly, uh, and this is also very good information for you to play on with additional mints going forward just so you can kind of get an idea of the patterns, Straight out the gate, people were buying this for around the 0.8. Then we had the initial sell-off. Now, this is natural. This always happens within the project. Um, we had that there. We then had uh, after sellout, which was around here, we then had this run up and then it hit the sort of 0.8 and actually hit some sales at around uh, 0.9, so very close to that one, one ETH. Then what strangely has happened is it's come down and it's gone as low as the sort of 0.6, bounce back up with a little bit of a recovery and then back down here. Now, this is a very strange chart. Usually it doesn't look quite like this. What I'll show you what a chart would usually look like is it would go down, it would bounce back up to around that 7.5, which is what it would be. It would kind of hit back up. It would go back down to around that 0.7 and then it would kind of bounce up and around. I would still expect this to be at around that sort of 0 0.7, 0 0.65 at the lowest mark, but currently sitting right down here Year, this is a very strange chart. Now, what I can attribute this to is first off, we have the uh, kind of two mints. Now, I am a fan of the two mints. Two mints lets someone uh, flip one and then hold one and ride one up. And what I think has happened is with this, 
People have initially sold off, speculators have bought in, we've then run up, we then had a second sell off, and then as we kind of hit this point here, which is where it was before, it was just an initial sell off uh, crazy, um, then there were some speculators wanting to get in, write it back up, and then those that did have their second exited around here. I think the other thing we need to keep our minds on is with Blur and the bid farming. With the fact that there is instant liquidity in the market means that people are more willing to exit a project and enter a project and this caps the upside but it adds instant liquidity for people that are in the market. So there's a lot more volume happening but there is less volatility when it comes to big extreme run-ups and pullbacks. So it is quite flat. Um, so what I'm kind of saying here is up until this part here, this is very flat where um, in another min, we may have seen a 0.9 down to 0.6 up down and then maybe gone up to a point like a 1.1 that's something that i would expect without the blur and bid farming but with blur and people high frequency trading i think that can kind of change things up a little bit now look before i go on let me know what you think momo guru is going to do after the reveal also if you like this content make sure you scroll down there hit up that subscribe button and also hit up the like button let's kick on now what we're going to do right now is have a look at the balances so the top balances who holds the biggest set what i want to do first is shout out to momoguru for actually labeling their vault because this can take a little bit of detective work to find out so we can strike this value from the list big shout out momoguru for actually labeling that vault now look when i'm breaking down these top holders uh the fact is we've got some whales that have some high conviction so 134 and um, 195 and then the top 15 rounds out at around 24 uh so um, it shows you that there are some people that have some conviction. And then when you get to the top 100 holders, uh, we then are down at a round seven. So what I'm kind of uh, taking away from here is that there are some people that have some crazy high conviction in the project. Um, and then people have actually kind of bought in to get a higher amount uh, to get up to that 20. I would like a more even distribution of holders. I like it when we have, say, um, let's round that up to um, 140. If you had 140 and this capped out at, say, 75, then you would show you that there's a very good uh, community and a good buying base for the project and people that are moving into it but when you have a big discrepancy in this top holder and the top 15 um, it can show you that there are some people throwing their weight around it's not good it's not bad it's just how you can kind of plan on people uh, exiting and liquidating the project later on now we're going to get into the profit leaderboard the top profit takers in momoguru now the top profit taker uh, 1.35 and then we're coming down to the 1.28 now what i want you to take away here is over here we've got nfts bought and then nfts sold all of the top profit takers are people that have fully exited the project. They do not care um, about the project. They just were in it for the quick flip, which is good. This is a bullish sign for me. So you can see um, by keeping an eye on these two columns here, the fact is all of the top profit takers are people that have exited the project. There is no one that's kind of half in, half out. Everyone that's profited has exited. So it should mean in theory that you have some holders, the sort of holders that are in there at the moment aren't necessarily going to, it reduces the downside because everyone that's exited has exited. So it means that everyone that's come in hopefully is the uh, holder to actually hold it. And then obviously get some upward pressure when it comes down to price. That's the way that I interpret that chart. Now we're going to have a look at the entry points for the top buyers and the smart money within the project. Now I like looking at this chart, the top five buying addresses, because it shows you where the entry points are for those people that have the highest conviction in the project. So you can see where a good price can be in. These uh, buyers were buying in on that initial pump up and they ran it up and they were buying up into around that 0.85 mark. Now the lowest that the top five buying addresses have been buying in is where the floor is now. So you can see that, let me clean it up for you. So you can see that the majority of the purchases were above that 0.7. So the top five buying addresses do feel like it is well priced above that 0.7. And it shows you that anything under 0.7 is a 
um, is a good deal when it comes down to their average and where they see the project. So for them to liquidate um, now underneath here, they are going to take a fat, fat loss. Um, so it also does mean that if you do enter in at around this, let me clean it up. If you do enter in at around that 0.6 and you write it up to the 0.8, you've got a 0.2 to run before they kind of get into profit territory um, or a break even and when they can then liquidate. So you can kind of see where your upside can be for this project. Now, when we get to the smart money and where they're buying in, it is a similar story. We have all these buys crazy in the beginning, but then the majority of them are at around that sort of 0.65 to around that 0.8 mark, which means that right now um, it is a buy and you can actually see that there have been some recent buys. So if you were to buy in, um, and then also I will kind of throw in that they have minted some, but uh, with that, like, look, that that's it is what it is. You can expect them to actually be minting the project, but we want to take into account these numbers up here. So the fact that any number underneath that sort of 0.65 mark is um, a loss for them if they want to sell with smart money. So it means that any time you can get in under that 0.65 mark, you are getting in at a discount. So at around that 0.6 mark means that you can then write it up to around that 0.75 mark to have some profit before these buyers may be getting into break even territory to liquidate their holdings. So that is a look at the smart money um, and where they have actually kind of bought into the project. Right now, when we have a look at the listings and where people are listing, how many listings are happening, what we can see here is the amount of listings has been sitting relatively flat um, when we have a look at the entire listings um, from Mint, but we have had that period, and this was the very uh, sort of rocky period where it went down, went up, uh, where we had the uh, listings go down because people were just exiting the project. But uh, what we can see here is that there is a slight uptrend from here, which means that listings is on the rise, which uh, typically means that pricing will go down because there's more supply than demand within the project in the market. Uh, when we have a look at the current listings where they stand, we do have a lot of people under that, just under that one ETH mark. Um, and we do have a thick wall um, at just at around that 0.7 to 0.85 mark, which is uh, where that previous um, thick chunk was. This coincides with uh, this initial chunk here. So that's where I think people are trying to get out and break even on their project. They've essentially essentially listed. Um, and it would also make sense for people that get in at around that 0.6, they can then list at that 0.75, then uh, once you kind of take out some royalties, they can end up with a 0.1 flip. That's how I interpret the listings within the project. Now, this video is made possible because of the channel sponsor, Frankendow. Frankendow is a DAO with over $1 million worth of assets under management, including four CryptoPunks. Their DAO is stacked with features like an ETH refunder, so stakers don't lose money on gas when they're voting and staking, a delegation feature which allows passive members to have a say and not have to be there for every vote. They have a council so whales can't rug the assets and extract the ETH. And the Frankendow is legally registered as an unincorporated non-profit association. This gives the DAO legal clarity and allows the DAO to operate freely in the US, which is good for US NFT holders. For all the information on Frankendow, scroll down there and check out all the links below. Now, something I'm going to touch on really quick is the uh, mint activity of the holders of the project and then also the sell activity of the holders of the project so you can see how they align and what communities they have been moving into. Uh, what we can see is uh, we've got Crowd, which is the... Uh, Creature World um, Open Edition there. They've minted that. Um, we've got uh, the Rooftop Community Pass, uh, which is dope. Um, Pocket Protect, big fan of that. Um, and then you can see uh, a few others here. Now, what you can also see when it comes down to the sell activity is we can see, uh, obviously, there is going to be a big um, amount of sellers because the sellers are the holders. That makes perfect sense. Also, the fact that 
but people were able to get to. Um, and then you can also see the other sellers here. So you've got uh, the Creature World um, Open Mint crowd, um, Rooftop Community Pass as well, and uh, Opepen Edition the uh super puma as well so this is what they're also selling um it's so we're looking at these what i'm taking away is a lot of the people that moved into uh momoguru are people that are actively trading because some of these are very on trend mints um they are hyped in a sense but they're on trend as in they're constantly uh happening so you got super puma uh saints and sinners uh mega punks uh rooftop all of these projects are projects that have had um a a lot of activity so a lot of action on blur uh so i think that is a little bit of a takeaway so what do i think will happen with the price floor for momoguru uh up until reveal at the moment sadly we have just seen a downtrend uh of the project itself especially after seller it has just been accelerating down what i do think will happen is we will hit because we've hit uh a uh, sort of a support at around that 0.6 i do and we're dipping below it now i do see us holding around that 0.6 for a little bit longer but i do see it bleeding out a little bit more and i can imagine our psychological barriers at around that sort of 0.5 to 0.5 mark um i think it will stay 2x above the mint i don't see it going right down but then when it comes to the actual reveal itself it will get frothy and things usually do cool off after uh, the reveal i do think this is contingent on what the team does uh sort of communications wise to hype up um, and get people pumped on the project but what happens with something as hyped as this is you have a lot of people trading flipping buying selling the fact that we had that much volume um, around 5,000 ETH worth of volume shows you just how much activity was being made on this project especially throw in uh, the blur activity which just changes the dynamic of what a hyped mint is and what people do and how people trade in a high frequency manner so that is a look at momoguru the drops the holders all of the price charts all of the action of what's happening hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully it helps you determine the value of the project and gives you a little bit of an insight a little bit of a look under the hood of the stats um that tool was nansen big fan of nansen but it can be a little bit pricey if you're not day in day out using it as a tool hopefully you found value in this video if you did Go down there, hit up that subscribe button, and also hit up the like button. Um, drop a comment and let me know where you think Momoguru is going to go after the reveal. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.